Did you hear? This is your Johnson County Library Insider. And now, our monthly must-knows. Here's the episode's call number. 720, Architecture. As you know, we've been growing, planning, and building our libraries inside and out. Architecture is also used a great deal in metaphors. So before you dig that foundation to build upon and establish a framework, brush up. We present your word of the month. Inquisitive. Intrigued. Interested. Burning with curiosity. We hope the Did You Hear podcast answers a lot of your questions and prompts you to consider new ones. Here are numbers you should know. 610,949. According to the latest U.S. Census Bureau data, Johnson County's population has reached 610,949 people. We invite every one of those people to subscribe to the Did You Hear podcast. Hey, welcome back to another edition of Did You Hear, the Johnson County Library podcast, your library insider, where we go into the library and then we check out stuff and then we return it on time because we're responsible patrons. Every time. (laughs) Well, no, no. in the podcast, we don't check out stuff. We 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 check out stuff in that we um, talk about stuff and we check it out, you know. Yeah. Hi, I'm Dave Carson. <laughs> there are two other people here. We're, we're also here. Jack and Charles are also here. Yeah. <laughs> this is Charles for people that can't tell the voices apart. And, and this is Jack. Hi, everybody. And this is Dave. So there are three of us. And uh, we are very excited to let everyone know that we have maxed out our brain power to come up with a plan for this podcast going forward. And it fits nicely into what the library is going to be exploring very soon. And it's called Discover Your Library. And so, uh, hey, let's just dive in and talk about what we're planning for the next seven months. Yeah. Yeah. So like you were saying, it's kind of an ambitious project, but I think everybody that's listening will will kind of be interested in different aspects or probably the whole thing. Um, I hope so. <laughs> hopefully, <that's, laughs> Two out of the seven episodes are going to be solid. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe skip number five. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so um, we just have a, a concept here of discovering your library mm-hmm. as the, the th- overall theme for this series. Right. And we're going to get into different parts of the library system and, and the people involved in, in making the library work um, just all around different aspects of your library. <laughs> What are some of the different parts of the library we're going to be discovering, Dave? Well, uh, I, I, I think Charles did a good job summing it up that it's, it's about the services, the collection, the people, and the people that work, the, work at the library, but the people that also attend the library and use all those services and all the events and all of that. So this very episode is the introduction to all those different parts and where you get to know us, your podcast cast hosts. But uh, coming up in July, uh, it's going to be about our patrons. And so um, we are really looking for great stories from our community, um, patrons that use our library. And so has the library affected your life, touched your life? Um, I know there are a lot of, I mean, you, you know more than I do because you're, you know, in contact with patrons so much. But I've heard such good stories about people that come to the library and they start their business here and then it takes off. Um, yeah, you hear, you hear about that um, with the makerspace and all the resources there. You also just hear about it from any of the, the other resources that people can find if it's books or, or any of the programs that we run. They're all, sure. they're all useful for the people. Yeah. 
So if you're out there in library land and listening to this, maybe as a patron of our libraries, a big devotee of the JCL library, we would love to hear your stories for this upcoming podcast episode. <laughs> yeah, um, for, for sure. I mean, and it could be anything. It could be uh, uh, librarians that, um, not librarians, like like uh, retirees that are, are like reaching out, uh, finding connect connections with each other, uh, people creating book groups, whatever. I mean, I think there was like a, even a quilting group that began through the library. Yeah. We would love to hear just any of those kind of stories, um, anime club, what, whatever. Um, let's see. So then. Yeah. Know. So, so then August, yeah. uh, the next month, we're kind of continuing that theme of focusing on the people and we're going to go to focus on our librarians, our, our staff here at the library. And, um, talk to them about what motivates them in their service to our patrons and the kinds of things that that they do in a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, for sure. And uh, I think it's always interesting just to know who a librarian is and how they got here and to hear those stories. So if you are a librarian who is a listener of the Did You Hear podcast, why did you become a librarian? Um, how did you become a librarian? Uh, and I, I think that's pretty interesting. And, and you know what? I want to put that question to you two. But let's uh, let's hold off until we get to the get yeah. to know you. Uh, a little bit. We'll section. save that for later. Yeah, save it for later. Uh, Jack, why don't you tell us about September? Okay, so coming up in September, uh, we're going to be having a focus on how arts and culture help define who we are as a library system. So yeah. in this episode in September, we're going to be hearing from musicians, writers, anyone we can get in contact with uh, that is going to let us know about the role the library has played in enabling the type of art they do, uh, whatever that may be. Uh, the library in general is happy to be a promoter of whatever craft people do, whether it's the technology that was, and I'm sure will in the future be again available in the maker space, whether it is these wonderful public spaces we provide. We're just interested in helping out artists in the September episode will be dedicated to that. Yeah. And uh, I, I think most people know, but maybe they don't, that, um, you know, at our branches, we have uh, local artists exhibiting their artwork and it's, it's pretty fantastic um, and varied. Uh, then we have our local music section on the website and uh, we've, try to bring in a lot of those musicians in for our, our different programming. And so, um, and, and, and the writers groups, I mean, it's, it's right. a, I, I think the arts is definitely central to a lot of the things that we do with the library and even with the new construction of, of buildings like the new Monticello and Lenexa city center, having arts incorporated into the construction of the building with the different the different pieces that were included that those are also it's a good point yeah yeah here at the next library we have these lovely uh massive i forget how tall exactly 20 foot tall murals handmade by german artisans who well the people can't see them so i'm going to say they're 250 feet tall <laughs> they're very large they're unbelievably large you know when uh the building when, when those were installed i got on i don't know what the machine's called but you know the uh they call them cherry pickers, yeah. but I don't know what the actual name is, but Probably you get in them and lift or something. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, I controlled the lift and held a camera. So I got these, uh, you know, shots of these from floor to ceiling and then ceiling back. Um, kind of scary, especially for the people that are on the floor watching me thinking I'm going to crash into the lights <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> or go through the top of, uh, the top of the library. Dave, come uh, back. Much, yeah, much like Willy Wonka at the end of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. <laughs> Just flying off to another to library. <laughs> and by the way, I don't know if y'all ever read the sequel to Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, but it is wild. Great, great glass elevator. Great glass elevator. There's aliens. There's mm -hmm. all kinds of messed up stuff. Mm -hmm. My parents wouldn't read the whole thing to me as I was a kid. It was too scary. <laughs> I, I read that as a kid and uh, it uh, I was like, it's not like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, but it's really cool. It's really weird, but but very cool. Yeah. Uh, uh, but we don't stop our year in September. No. no, no. We, no why we, would we? <laughs> we go right on to October. 
Yeah. Where we're talking about engaging in civics and community and all of the different the different programs and the different ways that you can engage with your community through the library and the ways that we try to engage with our broader community. Yeah. Yeah, the, the 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 programs that come to mind, like um, you know, uh, legislative coffee, mm-hmm. or um, gather at the table. Gather at the one. table. Yeah. That's huge. Yeah. Um, and if you don't know what those are, you know, we'll, we'll come come back in September. Um, we'll we'll o- have or some o- or October or, or both. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that one is in October. <laughs> I'm I'm here for the um, comedy relief part of the show, and it's not intended, but. <laughs> Yeah. Hmm. So marching on to uh, November, then, uh, when we're talking about discover your your library, so much of the library is about our events, and so we're really going to dive into um, all the behind the scenes stories about our events, like how they're planned, who plans them, why they're planned who attends them. Um, it's going to be very exciting. And a- anything you're looking forward to when we get to that? Just in general, getting to talk to some more of the people behind the scenes. I know I've, I've been involved in it a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, I transitioned in 2020 from a clerk position into an information specialist position. So I've been starting to see a little bit more of the, the planning and design of our events. All of that... Uh, there's there's a ton of work that goes on behind the scenes, so it'd be pretty cool to dive in more just from my own perspective, get yeah. a better grasp on it. Absolutely. Yeah. And just from the perspective of being, you know, frontline on the desk, like I think probably one of the most popular things that we had to shut down during COVID is the events. Patrons are always asking when they're coming back. And of right. course, that's all dependent on the public health gu- guidelines and on safety. But, you know, that's something, especially we get towards the end of this year, who knows what it's going to look like, but it's something we're all looking forward to. It, it really makes the library come alive and their library community come alive. And, you know, the fact that we offer stuff for kids, for families, for teens, for adults and all ages of adults. And what blows me away sometimes is just how well attended mm-hmm. particular events are. And a, a couple just that I found totally surprising. Um, one was a genealogy event where we had over 300. Actually, I think they said closer to 500 people. I think I was there that day. It was wild. <laughs> yeah. And then the other was uh, a Harry Potter themed event where they were playing Quidditch. And I don't know how they did it, but those kids were flying around on brooms in the library. Doesn't sound very safe. It's not a very safe sport. <laughs> It's the, the magic of libraries. Yes. Yeah. Uh, they don't talk about the concussions coming out of <laughs> flying I'm, around on Quidditch sticks. I thinking it was an exercise in imagination, but, yeah. Yeah. you know, that's what... Stuff always going wrong, dark magic. It's a bad scene. <laughs> so we close out our year, and it's probably what most people think about the library, and um, that is our collection. So we end our seven-part series on Discover Your Library with a deep dive into the collection. And I think this is going to be fascinating because I think everybody that's out there listening wants to know um, how we get our materials (laughs) and why we choose what we choose and what happens to them in the course of their, their life on the shelf or the virtual shelf, as it were. And so, uh, yeah, lo- lots to talk about with the collection. What, what are you curious about? I I would be interested to know uh, kind of the – we have that request for purchase form for materials on our website, a little preview for our collection yeah. there. But the kinds of things that we see more requests for just talking to our collection development people and see if they have an idea or some statistics for us about that. I think that'd be fascinating to see what, how we develop our, our collection through suggestions from patrons as well. Go ahead, yeah. Jack. <laughs> well, I have to think. I mean, I'm interested always in the ebook materials. Yeah. Uh, I'm sort of a idiosyncrasy among librarians, maybe, yeah. which is that uh, during the start of the pandemic, I essentially forsook 
uh, physical books, which is kind of odd. But yeah. I make heavy use of our e-library collection. And as there's always changes going on in that space, I'm curious. But, uh, yeah, I think that's the most fascinating part is is uh, all, all the changes that are happening because they mm. happen so quickly um, in, in formats and services that provide the formats. And so right now we're making a big shift to uh, Libby. And so yeah. have you been using Libby? L- Libby. Lib- Libby. Yeah, I've used it for our, our e-magazines. I've used it for that service um, with the transition over to Libby from RB Digital. And that has been something that is a great resource. And it, it seems like it's like any other type of technology. It just keeps getting better mm-hmm. and better, which, you know, for, for those that uh, were brave enough to be early adopters, it's like, yeah, there, there was there was a learning <laughs> curve, but it's definitely easier now. And so if you gave up on it a while back, come back and uh, be sure to check out our December episode yeah. uh, about the collection. Yeah, for better or for worse, Libby seems to be swallowing up a lot of other services, I guess. Like I initially started using it because some stuff under overdrive, like e-resources from other libraries ended up under the aegis of Libby. And it just keeps adding more stuff and like pulling in from other different, I don't know if there's like corporate consolidation or if it's just maybe some other, I don't know, but Libby's great. And increasingly it's, you can get more stuff there than another app. So it's nice. Yeah. All right. So I will do a quick summary of what our plan is going forward for the next seven months. Uh, We'll talk about this month in just a moment, but coming up, we're going to find out about who our patrons are as we discover our library. Um, Then who are our librarians? Um, We're going to talk about arts and culture. We are going to look at civics and our community. And then we'll talk about our events and we'll wrap up the year by doing a deep dive into the collection. So it's going to be a, an exciting series. And I'm, I'm so glad that we've done this where we're having a, uh, you know, an ongoing theme. It's, it's pretty exciting stuff, I feel. Yeah. But yeah. today... Uh, for this month, this month, we're talking about us. We're, <laughs> <laughs> my favorite thing to do. Talk about me. <laughs> well, how do you want to do this? Hi, my name's Dave. I'm I work at the Johnson County Library. Uh, hi, my name is Jack. This is Charles. Uh, we all work here. Uh, so today, to uh, help introduce us to us, uh, hopefully in a little bit more of a fun way, we have constructed a game. Woo-hoo! A game of deception and guile. Hopefully no one's feelings will come hurt out of this game. Uh, And the first piece of the game relates to facts about our lovely Johnson County library system. Oh, my. Yeah. So we we have a rich history here at Johnson County Library with our our 14 branches that we have. And um, each one has its own story and its own history. So we all tried to come up with some trivia to quiz each other on the history or possibly I think some people threw in some some deceptive facts about <laughs> I may I may have added some lies, yes. <laughs> the history of our, our system. So um if we wanna jump into some of these. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Okay. So my first fact, I, I kind of structured these um, as guess which branch. So okay. uh, my first one is, although this library was built in 1967, growing pressure from population growth in the area led it to being rebuilt on the same location in 1982. And our comprehensive library master plan which is our development plan for our system, Uh anticipates need for further expansion in the near future. So I have an idea. Okay. Mm, This one might be too easy for us, Charles. I don't know. I'm thinking we got an old library branch. Mm -hmm. Antioch's the oldest. This can't be Antioch. We haven't rebuilt Antioch that recently. Okay. I am leaning towards Blue Valley. What do Mm. you think, Dave? You know, I I grew up in Olathe, which is 151st Street, and it seems to me like that was not it was it was a really tiny one room uh, library that was close to Stillwell. So I don't feel like it was rebuilt on the same spot. Yeah, but I could be wrong. I think it's a bank now. Um, 
which library was that? You said Blue Valley. Yeah. So, so I'm thinking that was, so it's not Blue Valley. I think, has Corinth ever been rebuilt? Not that I know of, but it's definitely. <laughs> <laughs> We're not, we love Corinth. Mm. We're getting we love... into deep time here. It's kind of hard to say after a little while. Mm. Um, I guess mm. we just need to make a, a guess here. Um, okay. Well, I'm, I'll I'm defer a... to you in this case. I'm going to say Cedar Row. Okay. Actually, no, that it was the DeSoto branch of the really? Johnson County Library. Yeah, it's oh. it was originally just kind of a storefront library. A lot of our libraries started out as volunteer libraries in a storefront. Um, that one was at a local plumbing store and then there was there were some donors who helped buy the property right next to the post office in DeSoto where it still sits today and that opened in 67 and then the growth in DeSoto just exploded over the next decade and they rebuilt it on the same location and expanded it um, to its current size in 82 and they're anticipating with the amount of, of growth in DeSoto today that they're going to probably need to expand it again. Wow. That's interesting. I used to work there. I never knew any of that stuff. Yeah. Wow. That's DeSoto. pretty crazy. And I I knew while we were there, you and me, Charles, we they were just putting in new shelves. They right. were like changing everything around yep. just because they were always refreshing it's, it. Yeah. It's, it's a tiny library, but it's always at capacity. <laughs> Coming back. All right. Are we ready for question number two? Ready for question number two. Question number two. Take it away, Charles. Okay. So this branch, uh, it was completed in 1963, and it was the first building in the system to have been built for the express purpose of being a library. Well, the others weren't. <laughs> Built for the express purpose of being a library? My, so the way I, I was framing this question was the the building itself was not a building like one of those storefronts where we had shelving put into an existing business or oh. we renovated an existing building. Okay. This building was the first building in the system to have been built to be a brand new library. Okay. So which of our libraries looks the most library-ish of the old ones? Ooh. <laughs> well, that's funny because the, the one that might be my answer, I don't feel like it looks so much like a library as much as it looks like a, a, a 70s ski resort. <laughs> that's Corinth. <laughs> yes. Is Corinth the right answer? It is the right answer. Whoa! Yep. Hey. Corinth. So even though Antioch was there beforehand, it was not originally a library. It was... What was the, Antioch? It was a grocery store. Really? I guess I knew that somewhere in the recesses of my really? brain. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't know that. That's what I was told on my tour. <laughs> sometimes, yeah. I, sometimes I think Adam might just be telling us stuff on those tours. <laughs> it's, it's cool. It's a cool fact. Yeah. Uh, this one says, in so question three, in 2008, this branch was the headquarters of the newly established Home Connect program. The service has now moved, but still provides materials through the mail to patrons who are homebound. Oh. So I... I know it ended up in Central eventually. Where was it before Central? Yeah, it's got to be before that. Um, Lynn Wild used to be in charge of that program years ago. And he was a very strong advocate for seniors. Where was he working from? And I remember this from Adam's Magical Library Tour, too. They took us to some back room and they said, this is where, for a while, Home Connect was run out of. I just can't remember which I, building that I was. I feel like, besides Central, the one library that has the most behind-the-scenes office space would be Antioch. I'm putting in Antioch as my final answer. Well, I'm making a habit of deferring to Dave here okay. with his uh, extensive library knowledge. So okay. I'm going to get behind the former grocery store. It, it was actually Cedar Row. Oh, Cedar Row really? was the headquarters of, of, like you were saying, our senior outreach librarian position uh -huh. that we had. Uh, in 2008, there were a lot of things as I was reading through some branch histories during that time the push was to specialize branches into different service lines. And so that was where they located the Home Connect huh. service was at Cedar Row. Wow. Yeah. 
Interesting. Do you know what any of the other service lines were that they would have specialized out into? I think they had youth service at Antioch. They had um, uh, the Oak Park was our Latino service, right? Yep, that was one of the other ones. They just kind of. I'm. I'm not sure. Since I am a newer hire to the system, yeah. the push in 2008 that 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 was the specialty branches making right. them like destinations. Yeah, and or, then the thinking changed, and I, I hope I'm characterizing this right, but it, it was the feeling that all the branches should really focus on all of those services, yeah. and um, you know that way a patron doesn't have to travel to. Uh, another library to get uh, specific services. So th this next fact, fact four, is uh, one that may be pretty obvious to everybody here, but I just thought it was a cool fact to share with our audience. The Within the first eight minutes of opening, this branch had reached 615 visitors, and over the course of its first day of operations, it reached a total of 3,038 guests, which was over four times the number who attended the first day of operations at the Central Resource Library. That sounded like Monticello. I feel like... We were there that day, and it was wild, Charles. There was stuff. <laughs> There's people coming out of every room. There's crazy I, stuff happening. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna play Jack's game, and I will defer to Jack. <laughs> it it was like, Monticello. Yeah. yeah. This this is hard. We've that worked was, together at a couple of different libraries. Yeah, I feel like. True. Okay. Yeah. It was I, that day was wild. I cannot over. <laughs> I, I remember though how people really pulled together to rise to um, help out w w w with the situation because uh, there were people that went to buy bottled water and mm -hmm. were handing it out to the crowd. And everybody seemed to not mind having to wait to get into right. a new library like it was a hopping new club. Yeah. There's yeah. people people lined up around the block, like wrapped around the building. <laughs> like news crews were there and they're like, look, this library it's a big deal. It's going wild. And and that community waited a long time and wanted mm -hmm. a library for a very, very long time. So um, yeah, it was it was a big deal. Then we opened up Lenexa and did a very soft opening and didn't tell anyone we were opening. <laughs> right. It's a lot more chill. Right. It's still fun though. Yeah. So my, sure. my last fact, along those same lines of the popularity of our locations, this branch from its opening in 1994 operated at or near building capacity for about 13 years before it was rebuilt and expanded. And it was rebuilt and expanded at the same location, if that helps. I think that is the Leewood Pioneer building. Yeah? I do. Here's a random question. Why is there like a ship hanging from the rafters of the Leewood Pioneer building? I've always wondered that. I don't know. Is it is it a YS thing? Is it for kids? I hope so, because <laughs> otherwise I don't know. <laughs> or it's for the pirates, for the pioneer pioneers pirates. Yeah. Okay. Well, that that is correct. It oh. was Leewood Pioneer. I will tell you this: when I started, that original building was was there, and it just had such a leaky roof, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, it was <laughs> kind of. Ooh, that dark. could also be the boat reason. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so when just in when, case when they rebuilt it and made it bigger, man, it. Uh, it, it, I think that was the first one that really made me think, oh, we're going to have a more modern library approach. Mm -hmm. And I was so impressed with the design of it and the layout. And uh, it was open and bright. And, and I think that probably heavily influenced, you know, the libraries to come with Monticello and Lenexa. Yeah. And our newest one that will be coming around the corner. <laughs> Stay tuned. Spoiler alert. It's all modern. The whole library system's modern. One day it'll be postmodern. <laughs> be real exciting. I'm waiting for those cubist libraries. Yeah, yeah. Linux is kind of a postmodern library. I don't know if y'all have seen the furniture in here, but it's oh, it's yeah. pretty postmodern. Yeah. It's out there. I want a Dada. <laughs> That's it's kind of random and weird. I went to a restaurant that was um, re recently that was uh, based on a Dada theme, and so uh, you know, the, what, the what whole does that idea, mean? It's it's. Uh, 
you know, movement that was uh, absurd and incomprehensible. Yes. Yeah. Uh, what was the restaurant like? <laughs> and so, so, so in the restroom of the restaurant, they had fourteen toilet dispensers all over, you know, the walls. Oh, okay. Because it's ridiculous and. Yeah. I do. If library administration is listening right now and drawing up plans for a future library, I think this would be a pretty solid choice. Yeah, Dada, we we, we have uh, decided that that would be that would be good. The modern world is absurd, and we want to recognize that with our libraries. <laughs> yeah. Dada Soto. Hey, we can make it happen. I like maybe. It. Uh, did you have any others? That was, that, that was my five facts that I brought with me. So. Okay. What, um, what about, what about you, Jack? Do you have five facts? So I do. I have five facts of varying authenticity. <laughs> and I was thinking the game here could simply be true or false. Jack's library facts. Okay. So let me kick off here. Uh, so in my branch, which is the Lenexa branch, uh, we prop the hand sanitizer up with old paint cans. <laughs> One day... A patron walked in with an armful of empty paint cans and asked, is this where I can bring all of my paint cans? <laughs> true or false? I'm going to say true. I would say true. That it sounds... <laughs> it is in fact true. Too wacky to not be true. We don't want your paint cans, y'all. <laughs> we uh, don't take them. Side note, Johnson County uh, hazardous waste, I want to say. They will take your paint cans. Okay. And it's pretty cool. You just roll up, have it in your trunk, pop open your trunk. They come and you have to call to make an appointment, but yeah. uh, they turn it all into this gray industrial yeah. paint. But And then they sell that off too, right? You can, I thought I had seen in a video from the county that they do paint sales with that big gray industrial paint. Oh. So. There you go. Paint recycling. Yeah. And we're back. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, what is that? <laughs> I don't know what that is. There's someone doing a little tiny vacuum right above us. <laughs> yeah, we don't know if you're hearing what we're hearing, but we're hearing a little buzzing noise. Yeah. But we're going to keep going. Okay, we'll push on through. Uh, so the number two fact is, uh, if you look carefully out of the windows of one of our branches, you will see a blue-haired man jazzercising in a Speedo. <laughs> <laughs> on some days. Not infrequently. True or false? Uh, oh, and you guys can ask oh, me this, questions, oh, too, see, if necessary. See, I thought this was going to be multiple choice, and I was going to say all of the above. No, no. <laughs> you could see that, at, you know, out the window of every branch. Not every branch. Not all of them at the same time. Just one in particular. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think where that would be. But it's true or false. So yeah. I'm, I'm thinking he threw this in here because it's true. Yeah. <laughs> and I can't wait to hear more. Yeah. Let's go with true. It is also true. <laughs> it's a thing I have witnessed myself. Which, which branch? Oh, it's this branch here, right where we're oh. sitting. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Dave Space. <laughs> That's a fact. Okay. You don't say. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to keep bringing the true facts here. Okay. Uh, well, then I know. I'll, I'll, I'll go guess ahead. true. Okay. We'll hit another one. <laughs> uh, the bathrooms at Lenexa sit inside a metal tube architecturally, which is reinforced to withstand a direct hit from an explosion. Hmm. What? <laughs> I would say that sounds likely to be true with all of the... I know some of the buildings, the tornado shelter is the restroom, so that, oh. would, that would make sense to me. Sure, I'll go with true. Okay. That one is false. Uh, 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 <laughs> there is, it is the tornado shelter here. It's well reinforced, but it's not a bomb shelter, y'all. Don't. Oh. Yeah. Well, hey, based on the uh, Lenexa restaurant restrooms, I'll throw in a quick true or false. Okay. Uh, the Lenexa restrooms have our six by six animal characters on the walls. True or false? True. I, I work here, so I know that one. <laughs> it's true. You can um, no. use the restroom. Well, oh, they're no. not the six. Oh, they're you're not. right. They're, they're just not. animals. They're, they're just, just animals. animals. They're just funny animals. You got me, Dave. Mm -hmm. It's chipmunks. There's a fox. That's right. It's can nice. you name all the six by six animals? There's a, a peacock. Yeah, there's a peacock. There's a monkey. You got a monkey. There's you got a, that two, a turtle. Got a toucan. Toucan. Goat. A goat. Goat. And a goat. boat that floats. Uh, there's one more. Which is. I want to say it's a kangaroo. Yes. Yep. Yes, yes, yes. There you go. Got all six. We have won the six by six <laughs> challenge. <laughs> now you just have to remember what the different six by six skills are 
that each of those animals represents. Right. Which is something I do not remember at all times. Uh, well, <laughs> that, that, that's a quiz for another time. It's a quiz for another time. Okay. Let's keep going with the questions. Okay. Let's see. Here's another one. This one's just for all of Johnson County Library. It's a good tip for everyone out there listening. Uh, there's two types of registered service animals that you can bring into Johnson County Library branches, which are dogs and miniature horses. Miniature horses? If someone wanted to bring a registered miniature service horse into our branch, we would allow it. True. I Okay, so Charles believes me immediately. Yeah, so here's the thing. If it is true, I feel awful that I would be shocked. And and if it's true and you have to have a miniature horse to assist you, I apologize right now. But I want to know why. I'm going to say false. Okay. And Charles, you're saying true? I'm sticking with true. Well, Charles knows this is true because it's something we were trained on yep. <laughs> at various points. It is in the code. Yep. It's legally yep. miniature horse. What do you use I don't, miniature horse I don't know, Dave. <laughs> uh, I mean... They're smart animals. They do stuff. I've, I've never seen it. I've been waiting to see it because that would be a lovely day at the library. I mean, I suppose a good pack animal would be good to bring to the library to carry all your materials. They could warn people of danger somehow. Yeah. They can count with their hooves. Um, hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I've heard that pigs are ultra smart. Are you allowed to bring your pig to the library? No service pigs no. at this time. No. No service cats. No service regular size horses. No service cats now. Yeah. Stop right there. That's, mm. That's not allowed. And uh, uh, those are your five? I, I did look up real quick here while, while you two were yeah. chatting. The miniature horses can be trained to be guide horses. Uh -huh. So they can assist visually impaired. And they also, since they are, are smart and, and able to be trained <laughs> somewhat easily, they have used them in a well, similar role as the service dogs. Yeah. Wow. How small are these horses are we talking? Have you ever are seen these... a miniature horse? Yeah, I mean, I, I've they're, seen a, they're, they're dog yeah. size. They're dog size. 24 to 34 inches in height. Oh, that's remarkable. 70 to 100 pounds. It's so small. I didn't realize they were that small. I, th I think if you've seen a miniature horse, that that's a pretty good indication that you've been to some sort of small town fair. Because yeah. <laughs> they usually make a show of those types of things. On Parks and Rec, Little Sebastian, does that qualify as a miniature horse? Right. Okay. Yeah, well, I won't go. say a bad word about Little Sebastian. <laughs> Okay. All right. So um, so that was for my last one. I feel okay. like I uh, was ruined earlier. We talked about Corinth because that was a <laughs> lie about Corinth that now everyone will know is a lie. Uh, I'll lie. read it out. And okay. You guys can say lie. Right, sounds good. My lie is this. The Corinth building plan was originally intended to be a church. And if you stand at a special spot in the building and sing, everybody can hear you anywhere in the building. Well, oh, I wish that were true. Yeah. That'd be great. Okay. Mm. What facts have you brought to us, Dave? Uh, I didn't, but um, I'm going to wing it. Okay. Let's so, do it. This library was housed in the basement of a residence to begin with, which is interesting because uh, a lot of our libraries, you know, start out at other places, you know. Mm -hmm. I think we even had one that was in a barber shop. Or maybe that was just, you know. Yeah. So, interesting. So, yeah. I've never heard that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Where, which, which library do you think this was? I feel like I've... Which, whatever the first library is, right? I've heard a story about the Johnson County Library system starting in someone's basement. But which one is the oldest one? Is that Antioch? Is that... I think it may very well be. I'm going to go with Antioch. Yeah. Let's okay. go, I'm going Antioch. Antioch. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> so here's a uh, true or false. Um. You know, our, our newest branch is going to be Merriam, and Antioch is going to move and become the Merriam, and it'll be right across the street from the Ikea and part of the Merriam uh, Community Center there, and there's a great parking garage already, so it's just ready for us. Was the original Antioch library called... Antioch or Miriam? So it's not true mm. or false. <laughs> I switched it. True, Dave. <laughs> true. Uh, 
It was called Antioch or Marion. It was called Antioch or Marion. Take your pick. <laughs> um, I don't know. We'll tell you what. Let's hedge our bets. One of us will say Antioch. One of us will say Miriam, and we'll split the cash. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think I'm going to go Miriam. That's what I was going to go with. Okay, I'll go Antioch. Well, it, it was originally called Miriam. Yeah. Makes sense. Take yeah. that, Charles. Um, you got me. I wonder where the name Antioch came from. Sounds like it may be a name of indigenous origin. Maybe. Or, well, I don't know. All right. Now, here, here's a very tough one. Um, when they moved into a temporary storefront um, on Merriam Drive, what was it called? Take a book, leave a book. No. <laughs> eh. no. <laughs> nah. Oh, no. I don't That's know. It's a either. tough one. This says it was renamed Headquarters. Hmm. I like that. It's very Library official sounding. Headquarters. Library headquarters. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. I'm going to quickly look at another here. Okay. This is a library that I visited so I when wonder I was a teenager. If, if that's going to be a big spot for staff meetings so everybody can go to the Ikea, get meatballs, and do lunch breaks. That would be cool. Maybe so. Because you can go in backwards, right? They don't make you... I know Ikea makes you walk through the whole winding yeah, maze to get anywhere. There's a secret passage you can go through. Secret passage. Yeah, okay. To get to the diner. That's good. Instead of going through the showroom's pro tip, you can you can take a left. It takes you straight to the diner with all the meatballs. Okay. Don't follow the arrows on the floor. Just... Okay. It's a trap. <laughs> At one point, there was a really tiny library called the Cherokee Branch. I guess I could say true or false. I'm going to say false. Say true. It was true. What modern branch replaced the Cherokee branch? Can we ask where it is? Sure. That would be cheating. Where is it? I'm not going to tell you. Okay. <laughs> you can ask, but I mean, uh, it would soak out of the way, wouldn't it? It would. Yeah. That was a clever... Attempt of mine to find out <laughs> the correct answer. I do not know. I want to say Oak Park. That seems seems like I might have read something like that, but yeah, I'll go Oak Park. What about you, Jack? I'll defer to Charles. <laughs> he he is right. It was Oak Park. Yeah, very interesting. I'm sure it was named Cher. It was uh, the Cherokee Branch because it was located in the Cherokee Shopping Center. Right. And I think when I was reading about that one, it talked about Cedar Row and Oak Park. Didn't they, they were both kind of planned as expansions to the existing um, system at the time as the Northeast and the Southwest branch. Was that what they were something yeah, something like that, that. That's, yeah. that's exactly right so yeah. that was kind of their Corinth and, and Antioch were, were uh, tentatively named northeast and southwest yeah hmm. I mean, yeah, I'm glad they didn't go with those names yeah. <laughs> that's that's not that exciting no <laughs> <laughs> all right let me pull up one more and uh oh this is a good one Okay. Well, this is this is pretty easy. What was Lenexa? What was the Lenexa Library before uh, it became Lenexa City Center? Mm. Mm. Like spiritually Con speaking, or uh... zone? What was, <laughs> yeah? There, or there, what was the branch? Was, yeah, there was a branch yeah. in Lenexa down the street. Can Can you believe that you've already forgotten? It was on a surprised. street called Lackman. So I would guess. <laughs> Lackman it rhymes City Center with Ackman. <laughs> yes, it was not Lackman City Center. <laughs> uh, it's close enough. It was just Lackman. Oh, Lackman. Good old Lackman. <laughs> um, My library growing up, nice place. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, I was saying earlier that you know when I was a kid, uh, and a kid, you know, sixteen could drive and. Uh, <laughs> For a research paper, I drove to the Oak Park Library, and they had the you know physical card catalog paper card, and then uh, I went to uh, Antioch because 
in my day, <laughs> we did not have the internet, and uh, it was it was hard. You had to go library to library. That's rough. Exciting yeah. stuff, huh? I yeah. I don't believe it. No, it was, it was true. False. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. So, um, I think we should move on from uh, library history and and talk. We're going to talk a little personal history, right? Yeah, absolutely. Get to know your host. Why not? Why wouldn't you want to get to know your host? And get to know us. Jack, why Why wouldn't you? I don't why, know. Why are you going to be so stubborn about this? <laughs> uh, Open dear. up. Tell us. <laughs> We're, we're all going to be sharing today. Uh, some deep personal truths are going to be exposed. <laughs> okay, let's let's uh, launch into it. So I have a list of some questions. Dave, you have some of your own questions, or you want to throw some in the mix, or what do we? Do I have any from you, Dave? On my list from the forum. Well, you know what? Let's go back to um, my earlier question. I'll throw it to both of you. How did you become librarians? So, uh, I was press ganged into service. <laughs> I kind of came to the libraries in a circuitous route. I started out um, thinking I would be going into music education. Um, I went to school for music education and then just. Uh, I subbed for a couple of years, didn't really find a full-time position that that grabbed me and and pulled me into music education. Um, so then I was looking around for other positions, and I found that the Monticello Library was opening up in 2018, and they were doing a, a hiring push for circulation staff. And I thought back about since I grew up in the Kansas City area, I grew up going to the Central Resource Library. I volunteered as a teen with the library, and all these memories came flooding back about uh -huh. about my time volunteering um, on the Young Adult Advisory Council there. And I worked as a homework help coach at Central in the first parts of that. Wow. So all of my experience in libraries kind of pushed me towards giving it a shot and then I joined and in the orientation I realized that I had found the right position for me because a lot of the library values are the things that got me into education so yeah. all of that that the work that we do with patrons it appealed to me on that same wavelength that appealed to me to be an educator so yeah. Yeah. I, I wonder how many uh, of our librarians have a similar story um, that they were pursuing something else and it, it, they ended up here. And then also the education angle. I think that, it, you know, is such a, a nice fit uh, yeah. for, for some. Uh, you know, some people love the classroom, some, some try it and then it's <laughs> like, oh, maybe, maybe move on. But, but, you know, helping folks pursue lifelong learning hey the library is a great place right. for you to do that what about you jack uh let's see here so my story is uh i don't know a little bit less involved than that uh i graduated college with an english major and then got out of college and i was like wow i need a job yep. <laughs> as many many english majors have done before me <laughs> uh like many english majors uh you know i looked around and of course the public library is there it's somewhere i had been frequenting uh, all my life and just regarded as a pleasant place to be and a great resource. And I thought, wow, if I can get a job there, it'd be great. And lo and behold, here we are. Nice. That's great. Yeah. How about you, Dave? Yeah. Um, so I'm not a librarian. Um, my, my last degree that I got was in educational technology. And before that, I was, um, I, I taught communication courses, um, at uh, universities and colleges and community colleges and uh, uh, quickly discovered that uh, there were that it was totally oversaturated field <laughs> and I was uh, you know a finalist at jobs I'd, I'd be flown out to uh, you know Clemson and uh, North Carolina Charlotte you know and and, and other jobs and I was like, well, you didn't get the job. Who did they hire? Somebody with a PhD. I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> I have a master's degree and 
you're hiring somebody with a PhD. So um, I was like, mm, I don't know that I want to go into this field. Um, but I discovered uh, educational technology and um, it's really interesting because uh, the School of Information Services and Learning Technologies at the University of Missouri um, has the library program paired with the educational technology program. So hmm. half your classes are blended with library folks. And hmm. I actually work with some people that I went to school with. They got their MLS, which for those out there that don't know, that's your, your library, master of library science degree. And I got a master of education, educational technology. And so like Hillary uh, Sorio, Mm -hmm. um, I went to school with her and it's so okay. funny that, you know, we had classes together and, you know, here we are at the Johnson County Library. Um, but uh, it's, it's interesting because when, when I first went to school, um, the, there weren't really programs for web design yet. And that's what I wanted to do. And... I knew that there were some library programs that they had a few classes on, uh, you know, building websites. And so I started looking at library programs and then I just kind of accidentally stumbled across the program at Missouri. And um, I got to learn a lot about multimedia and building digital interfaces and, and things like that. And from there, I got a job at Iowa Public Television and CD-ROMs were still a thing. And so um, we were producing these games for students where you would go through like uh, this is the Mississippi River is a good example. Okay. You could travel up and down the Mississippi River, stop off in any particular city, and you could walk. And uh, so you could be down in uh, the French Quarter, for example, and you could stop in and see the preservation. Uh, uh, what is it? The preservation band? Uh, I can't remember the name of it. But. Um, or you could, you know, go to Lake Itasca where the Mississippi River starts and uh, the students, instead of writing just a boring old paper, they could uh, pursue a theme based on, say, like river commerce. And they could go to these different cities in this game and they could capture audio and take photos mm -hmm. and then really build a, a multimedia presentation and turn that in. And I was like, this is cool. And yeah. After that, we, we had a, a program called uh, Explore More, which was television, a website, and all that. But it was based on water quality, um, the future of energy, um, exploring usable landscapes, and genetic engineering, which at the time was a really hot thing. And so I loved that stuff. And then I got into Iowa history. Um, but, you know, that was just six years of that. And then... Um, I was really missing Kansas City. We came back to Kansas City and, um, you know, been here at the Johnson County Library ever since. And so that's that's probably more than you wanted to know. <laughs> this kind of got that a similar education thing, though, with the, the master's in education technology. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, it, it, what attracted me was was the mission, absolutely, just to helping people pursue lifelong learning. And um, at a library, it's the variety of people that you can help. And mm -hmm. I, I firmly believe that literacy is so very important. And that's the springboard to knowledge and wisdom. And yeah. hopefully that's... <laughs> What we're doing. we're we're helping people. Mm -hmm. I was going to quote our <laughs> mission statement, but which do you know our mission statement? It's uh, it's been a minute. Let's to, all say it in unison. Help, to help the community um, yeah, develop its uh, collective wisdom, something like that. That sounds right. We might correct that in the show notes. Yeah, yeah. I think it's on the bottom of our website if we want to cheat. <laughs> Yes. All right. So what's the next question? Well, okay. Well, we have our game. I've got a set of facts. I don't know who from. Uh, and yeah, one way we could do this is read them out. 
And, and then, then guess who, whose fact that is? Guess whose fact it is. Everyone okay. feel free to claim that it is your fact. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. First fact. Uh, this person loves a wide variety of book genres, but in terms of favorite, their go-to is almost always audiobooks. This one is me. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to say this is you. Okay. Dave has been sold that this one is me. What do you think, Charles? I don't know. I think since Dave's not claiming it as his own, could be could be me. Charles, Charles is being hesitant because he knows it's him, but in fact it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's me. Oh, yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay. I... I listen to a lot of different genres, but it's usually listening. I like to be able to to consume books on the go. I hear that. It's good. Very good. Multitasking. Listen to it real fast. Get through that like thick book in like five hours. It's great. <laughs> for, for, for me, I've always enjoyed movies. And so I, I worked in movie theaters, you know, through high school and it got me through college and I even managed the uh, Tivoli Theater here in Kansas City. Um, and uh, so so I, I like this the streaming videos. And so we have yeah. some some services here like uh, Canopy and. Um, that, and I enjoy listening to music. Also a big fan of music yeah. myself. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> the music, the music Charles major. Is a joke. Oh, yeah. that's a Charles joke. <laughs> okay. Let's keep doing on the board here. This one person was once trained in the martial art of Eskrima by a rogue janitor. <laughs> oh, that's me. <laughs> I think it might be Dave. <laughs> With these two people, I feel like yeah. it could literally be either of them, and I just have no idea. What is Eskrima, Dave? I have no idea. It's not Okay, me. well, then. I'd, I'd say that's Jack. Yeah. It is me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so what is Eskrima? It is a martial art originating in the Philippines. It okay. involves combat with weapons you find around you, oh. focusing on improvised weapons. So... <laughs> oh, I can't even say it. Macau Gra? What is, Maga. Is, that's, is, that's a different thing. But is that mostly like improvised? I think Krav Maga is imp I think Krav Maga, I don't know much about it, but it's created by the Israeli like defense forces. I, I right? think what we should do is just talk about things that we really don't know anything yeah. about. <laughs> yes. <because that's> good. <laughs> I think you're right. I can tell you, um, well, it's funny with Krav Maga because there's a <laughs> librarian here, a clerk, who actually does Krav Maga. Oh, really? Or at least used to. And wow. so she was telling us about it. Uh, Beth McDaniels. And so she, you learn, like learn how to tie up people. You go into like the dojo and like, like disable someone and get on the ground, and, like pretend tying them up. Cause oh it's like gosh. very much like a military like thing, huh. which is wild. And there's stuff that you can, I don't know if you can during the pandemic, but it's like karate. You can go in and like learn Krav Maga, which I highly recommend. Very good. Yeah. Okay. Moving on down. <laughs> this person has traveled to 48 States. 40. This one is me as well. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> I think this one might be Charles. Now, I've been to all 48 states. Which two states haven't you been to, Charles? Which two states haven't I been to? Yes. Uh, Missouri. <laughs> <laughs> You've never been to Missouri? Never so been. Close. Just, I, can't. I keep meaning to make <laughs> yeah, the trip. Right, yeah. Just, I've heard good things. <laughs> I have. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've been to everywhere but Missouri and like Everybody Arkansas. You've gone around. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I usually take the northern route through Iowa. That's right. Get around. So, it. <laughs> um, my family, my grandpa and grandma were school teachers, and they really wanted to spend a lot of time with their grandchildren, and they wanted to have educational and historical experiences for their grandchildren. So. My sister, my dad, and my grandparents would travel in a Winnebago camper every summer. And in addition to that, we would have um, family reunions at different states. And then we would also go to the National Convention of the YMCA because my dad was, um, you know, uh, part, part of that organization. And so anyways... All of that travel has brought me to 48 states, so I am the one. Hmm. Um, I have not been to, if you can guess, you know, 
It's Alaska hard to get. and Hawaii. Alaska and Hawaii. It's hard to drive hard to, get to, to Hawaii <laughs> in a car. All right. Um, you do it. You go through the Yukon. <laughs> I I submitted one of the facts. I might just give away that it was me. Go for it. Um, because it's also travel related. I put down that even though I have been on a trip out of the country before to England. Uh, I took a trip to London with a band when I was in high school. Wow. Um, I have never actually visited a state west of Kansas. So wow. Kansas is oh, as far Colorado? west as... No, nope. I haven't been to Colorado. You haven't been to Colorado. You haven't been to Missouri. Uh, I unfortunately <laughs> have been to Missouri. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Interesting. Wow. Yep, I... Well, guys, I hate to say it, but we're we're right at an hour, and yeah. so I'm not going to re- recommend that we wrap it up. And so I, I I hope that all of you that are out there listening have really appreciated getting <laughs> to know us, and we really want to get to know you. And uh, I think this has been a really fun way to kick off our Discover Your Library um, uh, series, and. Uh, Boy, there's going to be a whole lot of getting to know a lot of different things. So, yeah. Final thoughts? <laughs> say we call it a wrap for those of you that have made it this far into the episode. Yeah. And don't forget, if you were listening at the beginning, any of those people that we were wanting to hear your stories or um, any of those things to send them our way or, or share this podcast with people that might have stories until then happy reading we end today's show with another installment of in search of paul rudd Hey, it's Dave. Back to pursue Paul Rudd. Hey, Paul Rudd, if you're out there listening to the podcast, give me a a ring. (sighs) Sorry, people. I, I feel like I failed you. I mean, I have literally tried everything I can think of. I called my old friend Paul Mazzoni. I called uh, my sister. She told me she knew exactly who to contact and gave me a phone number. And it turned out to be my dad. And he didn't even remember who Paul Rudd was. Like I said, literally everybody I could possibly think of. You know, here's the thing, you know. I have really exhausted all options, and I'm about to throw in the towel. So I'm asking you, the listening audience, for help. You know, there's six degrees of separation, six degrees of Kevin Bacon, what, whatever. Somebody knows somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody who knows freaking Paul Rudd. So please... Why don't you contact us at did you hear at jocolibrary.org? Please let Paul Rudd know that we've tried everything. I mean, we have tried everything. Did You Hear is a production of Johnson County Library in Johnson County, Kansas, USA. Find new episodes each month on our website, jocolibrary.org, and older episodes at jocolibrary.org slash didyouhear. You can subscribe to the Did You Hear podcast from our streaming home, jocolibrary.podbean.com, or search for Joko Library or Did You Hear at your favorite podcast streaming service. Also, find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Joko Library, on Twitter at Joko Library, on Instagram, instagram.com slash Joko Library, and check out our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Joko Library. 
we'd love to hear from you via email. Write to us at didyouhear at jocolibrary.org. Hear a brand new episode on the first of next month. Thanks for listening.